You can listen to The Professional Left wherever you get your podcasts, on Netroots Radio, or at our website, proleftpod.com, where you can also contribute to this podcast. There's a PayPal button at our website, or you can mail us a letter and or contribution at P.O. Box 9133, Springfield, Illinois, 62791. This is the podcast for May Day, May 1st, 2020. It's not safe for work. Coming to you live from the Cornfield Resistance, where we would join the general strike, but we can't decide which of us is labor and which of us is the capitalist. It's the professional left with Drift Glass and Blue Gal. Happy International Workers' Day, darling. Happy International Workers' Day, Drift Glass. Yeah. You know, I don't know which one of us is management and which one of us is the worker. But I do know that you're the talent that goes to his trailer. <laughs> yes, I'm, it'll be in my trailer. I'm the one who um, I'm asking my wife to lay me off so I can collect unemployment so that we can. <laughs> Not going to happen. No, no. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, we have a we have a good division of labor. You put together the show notes. Mm -hmm. I edit the show after we record it. You do. Yes. And you make sure I have tea. And dinner. That's right. After that, while That's I'm right. editing. So, and I go it, around the house saying, shut up, shut up, everyone, shut up. Shut up. Shh, we're recording. Be quiet. Yeah. yeah. We have a whole now that ritual everyone's that home. we do. I've, yeah. I've actually, we've gotten pretty good at, you know, I can set up and take down my little podcast area, which, as uh, we've noted in with visual evidence, is basically me head in my closet for the last 10 years. Yeah. Um, pretty quick. So, um, it's Friday. Uh, just so you know, it is, in fact, May 1st. We're recording this on May 1st. And, oh, my goodness. Um, quite a week. <laughs> it's been quite a week. Uh, where would you like to start, Blue Gal? Well, I think there's a couple things I'd like to talk about. Um, one, I'd like to talk about lawyers for a minute. Okay. Uh, I, what did, I, I, this what did something... I do this time? <laughs> <laughs> Particularly, I wanted to talk about a couple of things where, uh, you know, we, we talk a lot about trusting professionals and how at least I do, that I've, I've had a viral tweet that said, look, people who like Donald Trump because he's not a politician need to have their teeth drilled by not a dentist. Right. And uh, Laura Ingram is one to always say, don't trust the experts. Does she have her hair done by, you know, her lawn guy or does she actually go to a professional to have her hair done? You can tell the way attorneys behave as to whether there is a case or not, or whether they are simply collecting a check. Yes. And this became very clear this week in the case of Sean Hannity. Yes. Sean Hannity uh, was very upset that the New York times was publishing articles indicating that his uh, behavior concerning the COVID-19 virus and his poo-pooing it, nobody's died yet, and this is all a hoax to hurt President Trump, blah, 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 uh -huh. that actual human beings had taken his actual advice and based on what he actually said, took a cruise. One person took a cruise and sure. caught the coronavirus, and there were direct result of Fox News portraying themselves as a news network oh. and Sean Hannity portraying himself as a truth teller mm -hmm. and them believing it. Right. And there and the Murdoch brothers who have inherited the running of Fox News from Rupert Murdoch, their dad, has heard from the attorneys that they they should be concerned about their primetime quote unquote talent. Uh, -huh. uh, Laura Ingram continuing to push hydrochloroquine as some sort of miracle cure and, uh, the poo pooing of the seriousness of this, yeah. uh, you know, Tucker last night said something to the effect of, well, anybody under 10 can't actually transmit it. And I wrote, you mean because the little kid's hands are so clean all the time? Is that why? <laughs> You know, just no concept of, no, this is a communicable disease. Right. And it can get anywhere. And you need to be clean and careful and not make it out to be nothing because you're afraid of what that's going to do to the president's poll numbers, the yeah. so-called president. Hannity, in particular, was really peeved at the New York Times. They had three specific articles that he was mad about. Because they indicated that watching Hannity, as a study by the University of Chicago pointed out, Hannity in particular 
uh, had led actual viewers to ruin. Had right. them right. trusting Hannity had mm-hmm. led to them getting sick. Right. And so Hannity said on his show, I believe it was Wednesday night, they're calling me and the president of the United States essentially murderers. And yeah. uh, we're going to yeah. take legal action, right? Yes. That's right. I don't we're going to take serious legal action against the New York Times. Did they get one this... of those diamond and silk letters that you got? Oh, yeah, really. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's another diamond and silk's been fired by Fox for oh, no. pushing quackers. Oh. They think that's going to help them. Uh, but, uh, you know, my, my attorney is going to take legal action. We're going to take legal action. And he said it on his radio program. He said it on his TV program. This is coronavirus hysteria. Yeah, I, I have one question. Uh huh. Wasn't Michael Cohen his attorney? Well, yes. Isn't his attorney already in jail? In jail. Uh, so, Michael Cohen, okay. individual two, is yeah. John Hannity. I'll, um, I'll, I'm going to get my t- attorney out of prison long enough that, to well, sue you. Yeah. And and Michael Cohen is in house arrest now because yeah. of coronavirus. That's so, right, which is the humane thing you know, to do, yes. Well, they should do that for everybody. Um, yeah, they should. Anyway, uh, the person representing Hannity in this particular case is actually a step down from Michael Cohen. Mm -hmm. Uh, It's Charles Harder, who is also Donald Trump's personal attorney. Uh, He took that client as well. (laughs) And uh, he's the guy who killed Gawker. He's the attorney who killed Gawker. So he's he's a... uh, He's a real go-getter. What can I yes. say? Well, he's he's a hard worker, that one. Oh, yeah. Uh, Charles Harder wrote a 12-page letter to the New York Times. Mm-hmm. And uh, when I saw when I read that, I went, aha, billable hours. Yeah. <laughs> you've got to, you've got probably three paralegals. Now, I'm saying this from some experience. I am not an attorney. No. I was married for 12 years to the president of the ACLU of Alabama, mm-hmm. who is also a law professor. He always had former students over to the house and they would talk shop. That's how I know what court is like, what depositions are like. I know the dirty, you know, what you say at a dinner party mm-hmm. about your profession is sometimes some of the best information you can get. And, and just in, in full disclosure, I was married for 10 years to a human yeah, rights judge, yes. human rights judge and an attorney as well. So yeah. I know you, you had all the dirty, you got the dirty side of it. From, oh yeah. Oh. You know, the cocktail party circuit where you hear this crazy client did this. Well, I and, wrote a yeah. letter. I did this. Yeah. And you all know. their lawyer friends. So they. Right. They, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And mm-hmm. and particularly with, with in my case, because he was a professor and we we would have uh, meetups with people who were 30, 33, 34 years old, uh, had, you know, were junior partners if right. at best. And mm-hmm. so they were doing the depositions, the initial depositions with lots of clients. These are the they're they're cranking a hundred, hundred ten hours a week just right. to get up the right, ladder. just yeah. to keep up with the paper. It's it's doc review, it's it's interviews, it's transcripts, it's all that kind of paperwork. Yep. And so Charles Harder didn't in, <laughs> didn't compose the entire letter here. I'm no. just telling you, the twelve page letter was composed by several lawyers who billed Sean Hannity by the hour. Uh, had this 12 page letter, you know, full of uh, invective about these three specific articles that defamed his client, cease and desist, published a retraction and apologized, you know, as that's the ask. Mm-hmm. Um, the Now, that's a billable hour situation. Yes. The New York Times has what is called a general counsel. Yes. yes. <laughs> Which means he's got one client. He's got a desk at the New York Times. He doesn't work for anybody else. And he doesn't build the New York Times by the hour. They have him on retainer. Mm-hmm. His letter was less than 70 words <laughs> because he's not going to waste any time on this. And basically the last sentence of the letter was, uh, I can read the whole letter to you, actually. I write in response to your 12-page letter alleging that your client, Sean Hannity, was defamed by three columns in the New York Times. The columns are accurate, do not reasonably imply what you and Mr. Hannity allege they do, and constitute protected opinion. In response to your request for an apology and retraction, our answer is no. <laughs> the end. That's It's a haiku. And, and I can yeah. guarantee you... David McCraw, the general counsel of the, he's also senior vice president at the New York Times. Yeah. Uh, typed that himself yeah. <laughs> with pleasure. <laughs> mm-hmm. 
uh, the next day, uh, Hannity changed the subject by buying New York Yankees tickets for a bunch of 500 New York Yankees tickets for healthcare workers, which it's not clear when those tickets are going to even be useful yeah. to the healthcare like, workers. Like Hannity himself, those tickets are irredeemable. So. <laughs> Exactly, exactly. But it was a way to change the subject and create some good press for himself. Sure. And as I said at my post at Crooks and Liars, Hannity got what he wanted from his attorney, which is, I'm going to take legal action and demand that the New York Times retract these terrible lies about me and the president of the United States. And he doesn't have to ever follow up on that because his viewers will, they do not have a memory of what happened yesterday. At all. The, the minute, at all. The, the minute that... <laughs> The minute the channel goes off the air, they, they sort yeah. of go into shutdown mode. And the next yeah. day is a brand new moment in history. New outrage. There's no, right. there's no past I, or future. They shook right. their fist at the New York Times and legal action and mm -hmm. writing a serious letter with demanding, demanding justice. Right. Uh, I, I want to let everyone know that we are not going to get into with any great detail uh, the charges that the Russians and a person that has changed their story multiple times and a media that can't seem to help doing the but her emails story over and over again, year after year, uh, charges against Joe Biden. No. Uh, we're just not going to spend any a lot of time on that. Uh, if, if you are alive and if you have access to a radio or television, you already know exactly what is going and, on. And especially a computer on Twitter. Right. Uh, you know, that and, and, uh, I, I, the things that I wanted to say about this are the are these three things. One is old sex scandals are Putin's favorite thing. Mm -hmm. Number two, it is a huge red flag. And this goes along with the whole knowing what attorneys do. Uh, this particular person was deposed by more than one activist, feminist, law firm who do nothing but who this is their thing and they want justice for their clients mm -hmm. she was deposed by them more than one firm deposed her none of them took her case and that to me is a huge red flag mm -hmm. and finally what someone said on twitter today which is we've got one thing we've got to do this year and that is vote republicans and donald trump out of office to save this country mm -hmm. to save this planet and this person on twitter said joe biden can shoot someone on fifth avenue and i will still vote for him because that is apparently the standard at which our politics yeah. is engaged right now yeah and i'm sorry about that but that is right now that is how dirty politics is right now it's horrifying uh, it's horrifying it's, and it I, is horrifying i get it i get angry i lash out i'm just as you know devastated by what's happening as anybody else but remember uh i i even try to remember from time to time that joe scarborough was a human being it's very difficult it's, it's difficult it's very <laughs> difficult sometimes well i I'm, do i do i really try to pray about that you know because i'm so angry at him uh but we we got to get to our humanity and also we got but we got to fight like this is the world we're talking about like your drinking water matters because it does your kids education we got Betsy DeVos in charge of your kids' education. Mm -hmm. We've got a coal lobbyist in charge of the EPA. This, the rest of the planet is, is what this is about. Mm -hmm. And the, the, person, the person who is going to go into the White House is going to be a member of the Democratic Party and is going to put Democrats in charge who know something about government. Mm -hmm. Instead of Donald Trump's idiot son-in-law trying to monetize a pandemic. And that's what you get. You get a, you know, institutional Democrat in the White House. That's what you get. And that is so much better than what we've got. We have to be grateful for it. Well, I'm not asking you to thank Joe Biden every day for, for the goodness in his heart. I'm saying this is what you get. This is your choice. And if you can't course, see that. You yeah. are operating at the level of delusion or privilege right. that puts you so far out of the orbit of normal human beings yep. that you cannot distinguish between clear and obvious, imperfect moral choices. And that is the sign of a child. 
Now, it, it, I, I hope you grow up. I mean, I, I voted, I've said this a million times. I voted for John Anderson because mm-hmm. Reagan mm-hmm. was crazy and, and Jimmy Carter was not perfect. And, and, and you, I got wanted, eight years, you got eight years of Reagan and it destroyed. Yeah. And it, it destroyed this, unions. It destroyed it, private sector well, unions. Well, it started yeah. rolling this whole ball downhill. Yep. Um, yep. And it is more in sorrow than in anger. I try to get across that there's a, a little back and forth I had. First of all, the smart thing to do is stay off Twitter because, you know, I started, <laughs> there's one person I know on Twitter and this other person I know on Twitter here. Here's I think I've identified the problem. It's yeah. yeah. But there there is a, a back and forth and there's a, a sort of um, consensus on Twitter about. You know, the left has its crazies and the right has its crazies. And you know mm-hmm. what? 20 years ago, I was telling a guy I worked with at the city of Chicago who was making the same fucking argument. Yes, you're right. The 10% of my party is just as crazy as the 90% of your party that's crazy. The difference is the 10% of my party never gets any power at all. Right. The, right. the, the crazies on the right run the White House and the Supreme Court and, and uh, one and a half Houses of Congress used to be two just a little while ago. Governor's offices, state legislatures, and that's where they live. The crazies on the right now live in the White House. The crazies on the left live on Twitter. The crazies on the right make actual horribly destructive policies that kill people. Mm -hmm. The crazies on the left make memes. (laughs) (laughs) And if you cannot understand the difference between the two, then you are living in such a completely removed from reality divorced from from consequence universe or now i'll get i'll concede this or you are so down in the hole that everyone sucks that your life is just a tragedy from start to finish everyone has let you down and you're it's it's, and you're willing to roll the dice and say fuck it all burn it all down okay well you know that's your choice i i will never again roll my eyes and say, let's screw it. Let's burn it all down. Cause I've seen what the consequences are. I've seen what happens when you, when you decide it's worth hurting people horribly to make your glorious revolution. Mm-hmm. And then it doesn't mm-hmm. happen. And you're like, well, and then you go around blaming everyone else. You know, it, it's yeah. all, it's the deal is the secret DLC plot to make all the black people vote for against my candidate. No, that isn't a plot. It's democracy. And I, I'm mm-hmm. sorry that it disagrees with you, but that's the way it works. If you have a better system and you have a way of making your better system into law, I'd love to hear it. But again, if you're saying, well, let's just get rid of shit I don't like and let's rearrange chairs so that they all suit me without actually taking into consideration voting <laughs> and registration and how things get passed from from word of mouth into how a bill becomes a law – then I don't want to hear from you because you're not you're a serious person. You're on a roll. I'm going yep. to put you on. A, I'm going to put you on another roll on another topic because I think we're arguing with the straw man at this point. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> but it's a fun straw man, isn't it? Fun straw man. Uh, both you wrote in our notes. Both ciderism is 100 percent immune to yeah. the coronavirus plague, yeah. and you have oh, multiple examples of this. It's just oh god, this is where. Can I just say that? Can I just say the Please. words? Yeah. Justin Amash is an independent. He's an independent. I'm an independent now. <laughs> I'm a libertarian independent. Libertarian I, independent constitutional well, conservative. I don't well, like the tweeting. Well, you got to admit, I mean, he he suddenly <laughs> discovered the Republican Party is full of Republicans <laughs> and ran halfway out of it. Because yeah. um, you, you can't just side with, with the vicious, psycho, liberal lunatics like me um, because he wants a libertarian paradise. And he he decided instead that he was going to run in the libertarian party because he's for, and and this week alone, he has sided more or less with the lunatics in Michigan who mm-hmm. took over a state house. Um, and he's running on uh, this, the, the old timers will get this joke and I'm, then I'll explain it for anyone who isn't. He's running in the McCain Lieberman party. <laughs> and if you don't know what the McCain Lieberman party is back in 2006, when David Brooks was still exactly as awful as he is now. Um, and and when both ciderism was becoming the the coin of the realm, because this was these were people who had who had bet the bet the farm on George W. Bush being a brilliant military and the Iraq war, yeah, and the Iraq yeah. war, a uh, massive tax cuts will solve all of our problems. The housing market is going to go up forever, so we never have to worry about deficits. You can fund everything; it's it's all going to be great. And every single fucking thing they said was going to happen 
collapsed under them. And, and on top of that great collapse was all of their rhetoric about what idiots liberals are, what traitors liberals are, and then liberals don't know shit, and blah, 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 blah. So there was an entire industry of just kicking the shit out of people like us because Republicans were never going to lose again, and everything was going to be great forever. And we were going to win in Iraq and be home by Christmas. And when that all fell apart <laughs> and liberals started saying, hey, maybe it's time we started punching back just a little bit. That's when David Brooks lost his mind and decided he had to shed his old persona, which was working for the Weekly Standard, calling liberals stupid and crazy and treasonous and awful and blah, blah, blah. And instead go, you know, really, it's both sides. It's both sides. Let's not judge anybody, especially me, because I'm the biggest asshole of the bunch. So let's all make a, an agreement among each other here in the Beltway that no one's ever going to judge anyone ever again. So let's put the blame where it belongs with the extremes on both sides, Blue Gal. Mm -hmm. And when mm -hmm. the and when liberals mounted a challenge to Joe fucking Lieberman, David Brooks wrote a fiery column about how the Tom delays on the right and the Netroots delays on the left are basically wrecking democracy. And and there's a but there's a third party out there, Blue Gal. It's called the McCain Lieberman Party. It's where all the reasonable, reasonable, sensible, centrist David Brooks people live, and that is the party that. Justin Amash is going for. He's going for, I can't side with either the extremes on the left or on the right because, you know, they're both crazy. But there's millions of people in America who are not being represented by these parties. And those millions deserve a choice on the ballot, meaning I will play the fucking spoiler until someone pays me to do otherwise. Right. But he's running right. on exactly the same delusional fantasy that there's, there has to be this perfect center where millions and millions and millions of people who never show up at the polls and never vote all live. And if you just pitch them the right message, which is a message that's been pitched to this imaginary uh, group for, for decades, they don't exist. There is no constituency for this. There is a marginal constituency that can tip an election one way or the other. But Justin Amash is never going to be president. And I don't understand what he's doing, frankly, because what he is doing is setting fire to his career now. He's 12 years old. He's a libertarian. When he hits puberty, you know, in he's got 10 a, years. He's got a billionaire who's told him that they want an alternative to Trump without having to vote for a Democrat. Sure. I want an off-ramp. I want an off-ramp from yep. Donald Trump. I don't want to vote for Trump, but I don't want to vote for any goddamn Democrat. And this is But I need a horse me. because I'm, my ego insists that I need a horse in the race. Right. And that's so, what Justin Amash decided yeah. to do this week. Yep. And again, he's, he's going full libertarian. He's He's... He's well, he's, he has in Michigan been funded by the DeVos family, like everything else right wing in Michigan. Yeah. And uh, let's move on. <laughs> well, and, and he is so he's running in he's the running uh, libertarian. Yeah. And yeah. it's uh, it, no it's, Democrat is going to vote for him. No. No. Um, uh, it's. It, it's uh, he, he's he's talking. The reason he's getting in now, I'll just mention is, and I'm quoting him directly, the visceral, visceral outrage of many partisans to giving Americans an additional choice on the ballot speaks volumes about the ugly, hyperpartisan nature of politics today. Both sides. This is the precisely the mindset that needs to be challenged and why this campaign is so critical. This is chapter and verse from David Brooks from 14 years ago. And, yep. and, the, and, the, and the beltway common wisdom that says. You know, it's always the Republicans are never to blame for anything. It's always both sides. It always is yep. both sides. Yep. And there's a lot of cowards and stupid people out there who really want that to be true because it absolves them of any responsibility for picking right. a fucking side. Right. Um, and who swings into action this week? Chuck Todd. Chuck Todd. I know this will shock you. But yeah, Chuck I Todd. This video for you. Yes, and you did. We ran it. We ran it at Crooks and Liars mm -hmm. as well as your blog. So well, and it was about the uh, the lunatics storming the uh, the new uh, uh, new. It was a New Jersey lunatics. These are all uh -huh. these are all the same plague rats. They're all it's they're all, all the same bitter little dick white guys who can't get a date and who are terrified of the future and and are terrified of having their manhood taken away from them. They're they have all guns. the same. And, they all have and guns. Apparently, as as Ely Mistel pointed out in the nation, they do not have children at home no, who no, can't. can't go to school. Well, because and, if they did, they would not be at demanding reopen, reopen. These guys are on either government pensions or disability, yeah, or something. They have a source of income that they can go on a Wednesday and uh, declare that they their state needs reopening. And it's astroturfed. It's just, yeah. 
Tea Party point two point oh. But well, Chuck Todd so, wanted, so didn't want to talk about that. He he <laughs> and, and so Katie Turr wanted to talk about the actual rallies that were happening and why these because people Because she was at one and she, she was, was wearing a and she yeah. was at one. <laughs> yeah. She was that one wearing a mask. <laughs> and it was clear that these people who just are fucking plague rats, as far as I'm concerned, they just want to spread disease as far as they possibly can, because freedom was not something that Chuck Todd wanted to talk about, because then it might involve pointing a finger at a certain group of people who are all politically homogeneous and saying that group is the fucking problem. So instead, Chuck Todd just changed the subject that to to from that specific protest and those specific people and this specific issue to. And I'm quoting now, we have a generation of government letting down the public, whether it's WMDs, the Great Recession, or this. So skepticism of government, you have to understand why it's out there. And it's out there on, say it with me now, the left and the, left the right. and the right. And I'm like, okay, let's go down that list of things that have disappointed <laughs> people. <laughs> there, okay, there's Republican uh, Iraq War. There's the Republican recession presided over by the Republican president who who meticulously, who, who deliberately who ran, you might recall, in 2000. George W. Bush ran on a domestic program of getting rid of the budget surplus, the budget right. surplus. So that when the recession hit, it was never going to happen. David Brooks swore there would never be another recession again, and he still kept his job. There were no reserves. There was nothing to throw at it. You had to go, you had to, you had to borrow a lot of money because George W. Bush had, in fact, gotten rid of the entire surplus. And was now back into gigantic deficit territory, which, of course, no Republican cares about because Republicans don't give a shit about deficits. So Chuck Todd went down the list of things that Republicans have fucked up and said, you know, skepticism of government is legitimate on the left and on the right because he cannot help himself. And I just I happen to be skipping past msnbc at that moment and said oh shit now i'm gonna have to write about this <laughs> and of course third and most popular coming in uh oh uh, today on friday but really right on the wire. really just just perfect um and i didn't have i really didn't have the energy to do this i didn't want to do this i don't I, I really really don't want to write about david brooks anymore i want him to be irrelevant i want him to go away and be irrelevant because I have nothing new left to say about David Brooks, which is perfect because David Brooks has nothing new to say about anything. I was so, going to say, there's nothing new to say about America or no. the economy or voters no. or anything. No. Well, no. apparently America is in great shape. Oh. Um, the pandemic has brought us all together. Um, there are no Republicans or Democrats anymore. Um, there are only rippers and weavers. <laughs> What? And weavers, I'm quoting now, try to spiritually hold each other so that we can get through this together. But rippers from Donald Trump on down see everything through the prism of politics and still emphasize division. The rippers, he says, on the left and the right, right. Mm -hmm. are to blame because they take politics as a war that gives their life meaning. Now, I just looked at this. And then I, I held it up to the light to the same fucking column about the delays on the left and the network delays on the right. Mm -hmm. They're exactly the same column. Mm -hmm. Exactly the same column separated by 14 years. Now, just yeah. think for a moment. And he really does go through here and say, you know, yeah, if you just ignore the Donald Trump circus. Oh, he did. He did. So those are exact words. That's yes. a quote from his article today. If you just ignore, you the, ignore Donald the Trump, Trump circus. circus. Yes. If, if it's a circus that we're not allowed to leave and that can kill us. But yeah. if we just ignore it and ignore the fact that he's a Republican and was nominated by the Republican Party and was elected by Republicans and has the full support of the Republican pa Party or Congress. And received more Republican votes in the Republican primaries than right. any Republican candidate in the history of the Republican Party. But it's that's not the problem. The problem is the, quote, polarization industry i guess <laughs> i guess i guess you and me remember the poll which of course consists of equal numbers of left and right blue gal left and right and and i asked my readers to do something for me and i'm asking mm -hmm. the listeners to do the same thing which is this is exactly the same column david brooks wrote 14 years ago it mm -hmm. is it is exactly it is it's not the it, it, there are these two groups that are eternally at war with each other. They're both equally to blame. They're both divisive. Yeah, Donald Trump's here, but it was Tom Delay back then. So if you just swap the word flamers for 
rippers and weavers for the McCain-Lieberman party. You have exactly the same column. And of course, in all cases, David Brooks is the hero. And we will ignore the fact that for pretty much his entire, the first half of his career, David Brooks was a ripper. David Brooks established his fucking career stomping on liberals like you and me, calling us traitors and calling us fools and calling us stooges and calling us um, uh, contemptuous of America and on and on. There was a cover of him. There are covers from the Weekly Standards of his shit just shitting all over liberals, which he lies about every time he's asked about it. So David Brooks has a long history of launching his career and getting himself onto the New York Times, which is where he's been ever since. By, by doing exactly the thing that he says is horrible. And since that time, he has said it's the left and the right. It's not Republicans and Democrats. It's this weird Donald Trump thing over here and these rippers and weavers, rippers and weavers, rippers and weavers. That's who's to blame. So let me ask you in your mind out there, dear listener, hold in your mind all of the shit that Republicans have done to this country over the last 14 years. All the madness, all the sedition, all the ruin, all the misery, all the death Republicans have inflicted on this country over the last 14 years. And hold as much of it in your head as you can. That's the Iraq war. That's climate denialism. That's Katrina. That's the recession. That's Limbaugh. That's Fox News. That's birtherism. That's the fake tea party. That's death panels. That's butter emails. That's Merrick Garland. And of course, the entire administration of Donald Trump. Hold all of that in your head. And then imagine that the allocation of blame that David Brooks wrote about 14 years ago is exactly the same as the allocation of blame he wrote today. Mm -hmm. 14 years ago, he was blaming the left and the right. All of that horrifying shit's happened since then, and he's writing the same fucking column. The Schulzberger family's paying him to write the same fucking column to be read by millions and millions of people like Justin Amash who don't mm-hmm. want to believe that the Republican Party is, in fact, its own disease, is, in fact, the problem, is, in fact, a plague. But instead, somehow, it's the left and the right. And if we just find these weavers and centrists, we'll all get along fine. And that put me over the top. I said, yeah, mm-hmm. I'm going to have to write about David Brooks today. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and mm-hmm. so I did. Mm-hmm. But it was it's just maddening that nobody in his universe calls him on any of this shit, mentions any of this shit will ever talk about any of this shit will never ask him one solid interesting question about yeah but what about this entire butcher's bill republicans have laid at the table where's the liberal equivalent of any of that what about the administration of barack obama eight years you think he was a ripper or a weaver there buddy Mm -hmm. and no Mm -hmm. one's going to ask him that because david brooks is a beltway god and if he were just some mumbling idiot on public transportation raving this shit i wouldn't care But he has an audience from NPR to PBS to the New York Times to the lecture circuit that that talks to millions of people. He spread this lie for 14 years to millions of people. And the evidence is all around us. All those cowards, all those frauds, all those centrists, all those people who don't want to take a side, don't talk about politics, who want to believe it's the left and the right, and there's a happy middle someplace. All those people are the bastard children of David Brooks. I want to just add to that, that... uh... I don't want to fall into the bubble of believing that voting for Donald Trump is so crazy or that Donald Trump is so awful that no one would vote for him because oh, no. No. there is still a very real possibility that Donald Trump will get reelected. I'm not trying to depress anybody. I'm trying to make you mad. Donald Trump was lobbied this week by the U.S. Chamber of Commerce. You know, they was. can call him up and he can write an executive order making sure that all the meat plants stay open no matter what. Mm -hmm. No matter if employees are dying or people are getting sick or it's a disease vector everywhere you go. Or the the meat is contaminated as it comes out of the factory. It doesn't matter. Doesn't Doesn't matter. matter. Doesn't matter. Uh, And the fact that certain well-funded constituencies can pick up the phone, call Donald Trump, get what they want. Donald Trump is now uh, taking funding away from certain military activities, which yep. are designed to shore up uh, Europe's defense against Russia. Mm-hmm. Just removing that money so he can build his wall. Mm-hmm. You're not going to hear shit about that wall after November. No, no. What wall? And 
The well, last, yeah. The last Confederate monument, you know? Right. The last Confederate mm-hmm. monument. That's it. And, uh, and, and you don't need a wall because Stephen Miller is in charge of immigration at the White House, and right. he shut it all down. Uh, my uh, son's roommate in college, who is supposed to be his roommate next fall and who is still living on campus because he's from Vietnam and he's going to school in the United States. And so uh, Augustana College allowed him to stay on campus because he's from overseas. Mm-hmm. Where could he go? I mean, you know, and he's considering flying back to see his parents this summer. And my son said, don't go. You won't be allowed back in. You know, you want to finish? You want to graduate with me? I want you to graduate with me. I want you to be to senior year with me. You're my roommate next year. You're my housemate next year. Don't leave the country because you won't be let back in. And that's terrifying. Mm-hmm. Uh, what's going on is there are a lot of people that want Donald Trump reelected. And they yep. have a lot of money. Yes, they And they do. have a lot of say as to what the media does. Mm-hmm. Uh, and... <laughs> This both siderism. I, I watched that Chuck Todd thing as well with Katie Tour at the at the rally, watching these disease vectors chant, pretending it's a whole new movement, connecting it to Donald Trump's reelection campaign. And the minute she's done talking, Chuck Todd replies to her with both sides. Mm-hmm. That's his job. He gets paid by the suits at MSNBC to say that. Right. That's that's what that. To change the subject and say that it's like a roll of toilet paper. They used up Dave, David Gregory for the same task mm-hmm. and threw him aside. And they're using the hired people in these roles. This is not a spontaneous uh, outburst of emotion or opinion. These are roles that are being cast on a TV show mm-hmm. and in the role of host of meet the press who contractually apparently has to say it's always both sides it's always both sides it's never just one or the other that and i will bend myself up like a like i don't know a a cirque de soleil acrobat to avoid saying that it's just the republicans that's the job this is not an accident chuck todd i can be as pissed at him as i want and i'm pissed at him mightily every single day because i think that lie is just poisonous that lie is the is the accelerant that makes creeps like trump possible but it really are the people who run the network who decided we want this asshole in this job because we want this lie told every fucking day. It's their job. David Brooks, I've been writing about him for 15 years, but the Schulzberger family hired him to be this asshole. And they pay him despite the fact that he has no fucking idea what's going on in the country and just makes up happy talk shit because rich people who live near the Schulzberger family want to believe this to be true. And so that's what his job is. Should those jobs exist? Of course not. Should those rich people have that much power over public opinion? Oh, hell no. But they do. And so this election is going to come down to a a desperate attempt beginning right now to level the playing field. Joe Biden there has has to be a horse race in November because of ratings. Joe Biden has has to be as bad or as good as Donald Trump. They have to be equivalent. They have to be equally terrible. So, you know, so... Hillary Clinton has to have email problems for every right. act of sexual predation that Donald Trump committed and bragged about on tape. But see that I've, I've heard a lot of frustration from some people in mm-hmm. my uh, social circle about Biden not being out there enough. And I think he's playing a very smart game. I, mm-hmm. I frankly feel that the more Joe Biden lets Donald Trump shit the bed over and over and over again and doesn't respond and isn't out there to be. And on the other hand, Biden's emails. Yeah. Yeah. You know, if, if, if every day is about Donald Trump, Joe Biden wins. Yeah. There, there are, there are podcasters and, and bloggers that we both know and love Mm -hmm. who live on social media. And every time Donald Trump tweets something, it's, but don't you realize you liar that blah, 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 blah. Well, yeah. first yeah. of all, you've been you've been blocked or muted by him ten years ago, five years ago, <laughs> and, and 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 really getting getting sparked up over every single lie he tells and just shaking your fist. And don't you realize the GDP is not what you just said it is? Every day, dozens and dozens and dozens of times, doesn't do anything. It, it demonstrates mm-hmm. to your audience what an outraged person you are and how righteous you are, and that's fine. I, well, I, I'm mad. I may your, be your brand. I, I'm not 
I'm no. all in favor of, of liberals having a brand that yeah, way. Yeah, you know, no, that's your I brand. No Go for it. <laughs> but the idea that that you are actually affecting the conversation, the political conversation, that you're actually nudging the Republican Party or Donald Trump or anybody in any direction or at all. Or the Democratic Party. Oh, I don't ludicrous. think you are. Yeah, no. There's no amount of yelling and fist shaking that is going to budge Republicans from their position. Yeah. Just aren't. And so whether you call him a liar once or call him a thousand times, we all know what he's like. Mm -hmm. We all know what Republicans are like. We all know that they are reprogrammable meatbags who will do whatever they're told to do every every time Sean Hannity takes another shit in their skull. It'll yeah. come out their mouth the next day as gospel. That's who so they that's are. That's why it has to be about Donald Trump and how yes. embarrassing it is that anyone would consider voting for him because you're not going yeah. for the Trump voter. The no. Trump voter has to be the guy yesterday holding up the sign that said tyrant bitch right. about the governor of Michigan, yeah. Gretchen Whitmer. That's your party. That's who you who represents you as a Republican. And, so that it's so fucking embarrassing to admit that you're a part of that, that you, you reach the middle. And that's, you have, you have to reach the middle negatively. I'm really, I'm sorry about that, but I really mm -hmm. think you have to, it has to be a spark that repels them rather than something that they're for. Cause they don't think about politics that often. No. But if it's embarrassing, like it was with John McCain in 2008, really that the waitress in the restaurant, I've told the story so many times, some white guy in his thirties sitting at a restaurant with a bunch of his friends after work saying, Oh, I think I'm going to vote for McCain. And the waitress and all the women at the table said, really? Really? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's all of a sudden it. he was, she was not going to vote for no. McCain. Oh, you, you want to sign the, I'm it's never a, getting laid card ever again yeah, card. Cause that'd I'm be great. Embarrassed. Yeah. Yes. I'm now embarrassed that I said that. So. Well, and, uh, and local wingnut social media here in Springfield is doing its job because it, it really, <laughs> I mean, just the most, the most prominent, and again, these are pillars of the community, mm -hmm. but they are, it's every day there's 20 posts about uh, J.B. Pritzker is fat and his wife is a monster. And look, he shipped out and he doesn't care about America. Look, he has a new haircut. Oh my God. Barack Obama went golfing. Can you believe the hypocrisy? Let's impeach everyone. Oh my God. Let's ship Pelosi and Schumer to China. That'll show them nonstop. Because they don't have any place to go. They're stuck in their houses, too. So these people are just the the worst impulses, the most sort of predatory, lunatic, fringy bullshit. You know, throbbingpatriotpost.com has a breaking story that that Screaming Eagle AK-47 post didn't have. And they're just reposting this shit over and over to each other. And they're just getting well, crazier. The, one, the, guy who, the guy who posted the one that said satire in the title of his yes. website. And they took it seriously. Right? And it took a, no, it was fiction. Yeah. And, <laughs> and, and, but the point being that they are distilling their crazy. They're, they're getting yeah, more yeah. and more potent. And it is, uh, this is something that we have referred to as the tribe that rubs shit in their hair. Yeah. And yeah. they're all in their caves now and they're all getting their hair really, really shitty. And they all think it looks beautiful. And the minute they get out in public and people just, they start looking, you're that guy, you're that asshole. Really? They're, becoming i mean they're they're solidifying their community the, there's a there's a they're a tribe now and they all they all respect each other and they all love each other and they all promote each other and they all say yeah man you're right but that's it there's no there's no one joining their team because they're so fucking crazy and they're so fucking disgusting and they're so desperate for any conspiracy that props up their deranged worldview that nobody wants to be around them we're and, running out of time oh I'm so sorry. Let, let's talk about manufacturing renaissance and then do a news roundup. Well, I also just want to mention for the record that I do not believe that Bernie Sanders was a puppet of Jeff Weaver all this time. Just want that <laughs> on the record. Just want that on the record. Apparently, uh, one of the more. Um, <sighs> I don't want to have this fight with anybody. <laughs> well, I, I, this isn't a fight. This is this is simply there are uh, several people on the left who now that Jeff Weaver has switched sides um, believe that, Oh, see, he was pulling the strings all along. And I don't believe that. I believe Bernie Sanders made his own decisions. He's a grown man. He's been in the Senate for, you know, many, many decades and is a thoughtful, intelligent person and made his own decisions and made his own personnel choices and, and has endorsed Joe Biden. It isn't more complicated than that, but there are people who just can't 
can't well, get over that. And I'm so, I'm grateful that Joe Biden and Bernie Sanders are working together. I am too. I, this, this is, is this is going to move the party in the direction it needs to go. Yeah. Yeah. Joe Biden alone is weaker than he is with Bernie Sanders pushing him. Yeah. And we, from inside the room, from yeah. inside the conversation, coming in and saying, yes, Joe, here's where my voters are. And here's where if you want to get them excited about your campaign, mm -hmm. here are the issues you need to focus on. That is fantastic news. Yeah. And Joe Biden uh, has worked out. I don't know if everyone heard this yesterday from the Associated Press. They now have a pact about de future delegates that mm -hmm. Bernie Sanders is going to have delegates that he would not get. Because mm -hmm. he dropped out, right? That and who knows what the quote unquote the convention is going to be. They're going to have to do some stuff by you know Zoom room or whatever. The delegations are going to have to figure out. I don't think they're going to be able to have the convention face to face, right. and uh, so but they're going to work all that out. But Bernie Sanders' people are going to be have more representation in that group as the Democratic National Convention than they would have if he just dropped out and wasn't there wasn't an agreement with the Biden campaign that, yes, my people will have a voice and will be present as delegates. Mm -hmm. Biden gave up delegates to Bernie Sanders. That's what happened mm -hmm. in exchange for peace. You know, right. this is this is politics. This, this is, is how I don't, I don't you do it. <laughs> I don't understand how this is not. This is something that you learn in student council in yeah, ninth that's not grade. Caving. That's you... building a coalition. You know, you want a third party, you build coalitions with the third party, and you that's how that's how parliamentary this ideal of a parliamentary system, that's how it works. You build coalitions with people you don't agree hundred yes. percent about things you, with, right? You each win a, a portion because yes. you have a sufficient representation of the population, but right. then to form a government, you build coalitions. Yeah. And, and that's what <laughs> that's what they've done. They've it burnt the Bernie Sanders camp and the Joe Biden camp have agreed we're not gonna fight about primaries anymore mm -hmm. we're each going to have a certain percentage of the delegates uh which bernie would not get if he hadn't agreed to this this they were not going to automatically go to him under democratic mm -hmm. rules but biden said no go ahead so because he needs he needs it to be peaceful on his side of the ticket yeah. right he needs, need he needs he a united need, party. Need a party right yes. and so this is a good thing. And Bernie Sanders is not stupid or a pawn or a no. puppet to anybody. He's doing what he needs to do to get his issues and to move the party in the direction that he wants it to well, go. Well, let's let's re let's remember that Bernie Sanders got rural medical centers. Right. For the Sanders centers, his, right. Yeah, the, for his state. Community health care. By, by yeah. brokering a compromise with the Obama administration right. over the Affordable Care Act. He did not say, I'm not going to give you anything. Uh, Medicare for all or bust. And, and, that's right. a and walk out of the room. No, and, he got and, community medical centers. Now, he made it very clear that I want Medicare for all. He's never been shy about that. He's never been, that's his, been his position. That's great. But he's smart enough to know, here is what I can get now. And right. this will save lives of people in my community. And, so, I, yeah. so yeah, and I don't give up anything because five years from now, 10 years from now, I'll be in a position to make a larger ask and get more of what I want, which is, is how politics that. works. He's exactly doing that. Yep. Anyway. Yep. Okay. Uh, so, so talk to me about manufacturing renaissance. Yeah. Well, there's a group that I helped found, believe it or not, about 16, 17 years ago called Manufacturing Renaissance. It was the Chicago Manufacturing Renaissance Council, but it has since um, moved to various states, et cetera, et cetera. I, I literally helped found it with two other people in a hotel room or in, in, in a guy's office. Um, and it's done enormous good work in the city of Chicago. Um, I'm no longer there because, you know, this recession came along and, <laughs> and suddenly I was out on my ass and uh, being in manufacturing was not a good thing. And being in workforce development was not a good thing. And being in both of those things was very much not good. But the organization uh, continues. The high school we set up is in its 15th year, 14th year, I think, and doing well. Um, but I have a deep and abiding interest in American manufacturing. Barack Obama thought the program that we set up was a model. Dick Durbin thinks that the thing we did was a model. So I'm very proud of it. But this is where literally the rubber meets the PPE. This, mm -hmm. These are people who actually build shit. 
and and make you know here, here's raw material here's the finished product we're going to make stuff and sell it and we're an american company well was it part of your job to make sure that there was funding for osha training oh yeah yeah no we, at small manufacturing plants and so we forth? had we, we did yeah. osha training we did lean manufacturing training we did apprenticeship programs we had deep roots in the public schools. We, we mm-hmm. changed the curriculum at city colleges and at the high school so that it reflected industry today, not industry 30 years ago. Mm-hmm. Uh, we got businesses on board as partners. Our, our rule was anytime we go and do a, poli- a big political ask or a big fin- funding ask from the city, we're asking for millions of dollars. We go in with business, labor, and government and education as a unit. Mm-hmm. You cannot mm-hmm. pick us apart on this issue. This issue we all agree must be addressed. And it was very effective. We didn't have actual authority, but we had moral authority. Mm-hmm. And and we got a lot done. And they're still doing great things. Um, and so we had manufacturing partners who would fund school programs, who would provide literal machinery in schools to train people on because they're smart enough to know these high school students and these these community college students are my future workforce. And if I don't train them, if I'm not actively involved in, in helping them learn, I will be out of business in 10 years. So that was the plan. And, and it worked really well until this, you know, again, this giant recession came along. But I still but keep track of you wanted to talk about this in, li- in light of COVID. I did. Uh, because they do publish a newsletter and I'm on their newsletter uh, mailing list. And I still keep tabs on them and I stay in touch. Uh, and the, the hiring portion of this. From the newsletter, most manufacturing partners aren't hiring at this time. They do not want to make commitments to people they can't keep. They're waiting to see what happens. Orders are low doing, uh, due to business being closed for most metal fabrication environments. Food, plastic, consumer products, corrugated, and packaging are steady as far as production, but they're only hiring skill positions or hard to find skill sets. Uh, all other positions are being filled by temps. So they're they're critical. They're a critical industry, and they are on their back foot, they're doing the, the best they can, but there's a lot of stuff they just can't do uh, during during this. And it's one of those things that you don't think about until it isn't happening anymore. Um, and then the Renaissance staff is still in touch with local business owners, local manufacturers, local labor people, and they send out feelers to see how you're doing, what's going on and whatnot. And one from this week is from a guy I actually know, uh, Craig Friedman. He's a CEO of Friedman Seating. Hmm. And he says... The virus has permeated every aspect of our lives. As an essential manufacturer, we've been doing our best to keep our lines open, but it's been challenging. Our main goal is to keep our workforce safe. You hear that, meat manufacturers? Wow. Um, those who do not feel comfortable coming in or, or, of course, are sick do not need to come in. We have roughly 65% attendance. We're taking long weekends to sanitize the facility to provide comfort and security for our valued associates. I'm amazed at the resiliency and determination uh, of not only our team, but those nonprofits like Manufacturing Renaissance, yay, and Westside Forward and JARC, which is the Jane Addams Resource Center, which does great work. We're pushing Mm -hmm. ahead to serve those most in need during this crisis. These are organizations that really do work with poor people, people in in dire situations. Yep, hungry people. Yep, Um, yep. Um, we are uh, manufacturing non-medical face masks for use by the general public. We've been donating to the local police and dist- uh, police district along with the CTA and PACE. That's the public transit system. Um, and they're just doing the best they can. Um, mm-hmm. These are people who, who really, really work hard to be good community members and good, good community citizens. And on this um, Labor Day, on this International yes, Worker International Day. International Labor Day. There, yeah. And with so many companies rightly being dragged through the mud, dragged over the coals for the way they treat their workers and being union busters. The way they try to scrape up federal funds that they don't deserve. And and shoving people CEOs. Yeah. Shoving people into into dangerous work environments and then putting a gun to their head and said if you saying if you stay home you don't get an employment because neener neener. Right. Because um, we own the governor because yeah. and we know which party that is. Yeah. There yeah. are really responsible companies out there that one of my friends and, does and if management is willing to meet you and say, look, the number one thing is everybody be safe. And if that means I have to shut down, we'll do it. Yeah. But let's see what we can do to stay open because that's better for everybody. Let's yeah. try. I don't know a single company where the workers wouldn't want to help help their company stay open. No. That's just normal. No. And this is a seating company and they're shifting over to making masks, yep. non-medical masks for, yep. for the CTA. And CTA and Pace. Yeah. That's the, the Chicago Transit Authority. 
uh, mm-hmm. the bus lines and the train lines, which is how people get around in large right. cities. So, yeah. which is a yeah. crowded environment. So it's very, tr- it's frightening. Yeah. And so yeah. making face masks for those is actually really important. It's not something you think about right away, but it really is important. So my hat's off to uh, hats off. Absolutely. Seating and all, all my buddies back at manufacturing Renaissance. Hey, drift class. I want to, I want to uh, switch gears real quick and just, uh, it's not often that we congratulate a cable news host. No, um, never. We never do that. <laughs> but uh, Anderson Cooper has a little baby. He does have a little baby. And he's so cute. And uh, he had it by surrogate. And you said this morning, and you, I asked you to type it in our notes because it is so true. We have lived to see the day when a gay anchor of a major cable news network can go on the air, introduce his baby son born of a surrogate. And celebrate family values. Yeah. Yeah. And that's a remarkable thing. So much winning, Blue Gal. So much so winning. So much winning. So much winning. Um, uh, you watched the Parks and Rec show. I haven't watched it yet. Don't, no spoilers. We'll, no spoilers. I just I caught again. the last half of it because I was busy doing something else. But it's really good. It's really okay. wonderful. It's sweet. And I urge you all to watch. And, of course, they're raising money for, for food banks. And if you can give money to food banks, because, man, there's a lot of people out there who are really hurting now, who are hurting beforehand, and it's just devastating. Can we do a shout out to our friend, Melissa? Yes, yes, yes. She did a fundraiser on Facebook this week for menstrual supplies for poor women who are, you know, not able to afford when you're out of work. And that's a necessity. It is a necessity. And, uh, you know, she was hoping to be able to buy a case to distribute. Yeah. And uh, I think she raised 10 times what she thought she was going to raise. She, she certainly she shouldn't raise seven or eight times what she thought yeah. she was going to raise. So that's just terrific. And that was just one person deciding to make a difference. And we're very yeah. proud of her. All right, let's do a news roundup. OK. 3.4 million Americans filed first time unemployment claims this week, bringing the six week total to more than 30 million unemployed. If you are one of those people. We are thinking of you and uh, Mm -hmm. hope you're keeping body and soul together. We're we're with you. It's a tough, tough time. Um, More than one million Americans are known to have contracted COVID-19. That number is probably much higher due to grossly inadequate testing. Trump said out loud regarding pandemic funding for Democrat states. If we do that, we're going to have to get something for it. Yeah. Yeah. That's called in Latin. Quid pro quo. Yeah, that's a quid pro quo. That's literally holding individual states hostage to the whims of the lunatic in the White House. Um, Our brand new White House press secretary, Curly, uh, (laughs) declared that Trump's, quote, total exoneration in the Russia probe before abruptly ending the briefing today. She did that today? She started talking about Russia? Right. Total exoneration. Total exoneration. Uh, Because she's wearing that shock collar. And if she doesn't say that, she gets a jolt. Uh, yeah. Then she added, everyone should watch the Fox News town hall from 7 to 10 p.m. It will be can't miss television like the highly rated President Trump coronavirus task force briefings have been, which is yeah. just new low. It's a new low. Yeah, this is a town hall with Donald Trump. Yeah, on Fox. Uh, still during the primary season. And uh, it really should be uh, in-kind campaign contribution. Yeah. Uh, they have it on their Chiron, right next to their Chiron, a picture of President Trump. President Trump mm-hmm. is on the screen of Fox now, 24-7. Because it's can't miss television, and it's highly rated. I mean, those are the two most important things. And really, it's being promoted, so it's being promoted by the White House, right. Yeah, and Fox News is promoting the Trump campaign. It's, yep. it's two minutes hate. Now it's a two yeah. hour long, but that's what it's going to be. But 24-7, Donald Trump's face is on the Fox News screen. Yeah. They love Big Brother, honey. They love oh, Big Brother. Oh, man. Trump dismisses coronavirus relief for states and local communities because he says only Democratic states are struggling. Republican states are in strong shape. Is that luck or talent, he said? Yeah, or just a lie. Um, yeah. Laura Ingram is now openly retweeting white nationalists, which is so on brand for her. Very on brand. Mm-hmm. Uh, The Republican-led Michigan House did not extend coronavirus emergency declaration. They voted to sue Governor Gretchen Whitmer, who is polling about 25 (laughs) points ahead of President Stupid on coronavirus (laughs) response in Michigan. She's at like 61% approval rating in Michigan. And that is something that 
every news outlet when if they're cover if they have to cover these COVID idiots, yeah, you know, doing the doing the protests, they should note in the state where this is happening how unpopular that is. Yeah, it is over sixty percent of Republicans who think the shutdown needs to continue. Yeah. Uh, NBC News is reporting the Trump administration is cornering the markets on tests, PPE, and ventilators. Agencies are seizing and or buying shipments of goods stopped by the Department of Justice Task Force. And the White House is directing acquisitions and allocations of even private goods. Colorado and Maryland have hidden their COVID tests arriving from South Korea from Donald Trump so they don't get stolen. Yep. Yeah, this is this is a uh, strong man. Um, mm-hmm. behavior. This is how yeah. uh, a mob boss or a tin pot dictator behaves. You, well, and you... we talk about the, the old line of if if all you have is a hammer, every problem is a nail. Yeah. If the only thing that you've gained any success in in your life is slapping your name on something and marketing it, yeah. and you, you look at this, then you say, put Jared in a room with a couple of hedge fund guys, have them all on Gmail and private phone servers, and try to make a profit off of branding health care. Well, this That's is, what they're trying to do is make this a Trump solved problem. Well, Trump, this is Trump incorporated. This is also, if I understand the concept correctly, a water emperor, which is the emperor controls the water supply. Wow. And yeah. the emperor um, can can divert water wherever he wants. Now, um, in times of uh, he can just divert water away from um, the disloyal province Mm-hmm. and starve mm-hmm. them to death and give water to the loyal. Now, if there's two equally loyal province, what does he do? Well, he tosses a coin. One of them will die and not be a problem. The other one will survive and be eternally loyal. This is how dictators think. This is how Donald Trump thinks. He thinks of himself as king of the United States. And if if getting him off the hook, if increasing his electoral chances means starving democratic states, Punishing sanctuary cities and punishing democratic states will, you know, kill a few people there, suffer, make them suffer, put them down, mm-hmm. uh, mail in voting, you know, we'll, we'll hold the post office hostage. This is how dictators think and behave. Donald Trump thinks he's a dictator. And the only thing stopping him from fully locking in and being a dictator is the election in November. A small airport in in North Dakota has now received enough money under the federal stimulus law to cover its expenses for 50 years. JFK International Airport in New York City has been given enough for three months. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> so we love you. Yes. We should also know that it's today is the first day of masks on mandatory here in Illinois. So masks, outdoor masks are, are mandatory yeah. here. And tempers in are Illinois. flaring at Humphreys Market, I understand. Oh really? Yeah. Okay. They, they do not like going they're they're not allowing people in the door without masks. Yeah. Uh there's also another uh protest here, even as we are recording this. Um the open Illinois plague rats, the state capitol, just a couple of miles from here, are having another protest. Um, st- standing around the state capitol, screaming about freedom and passing the bug along to as many people as they can. So, wow, yeah, welcome to Illinois. Land hey, of the each week, each week we post to our Facebook page and website an internet kitty sent in by you, the listeners. This week's internet kitty is Meru after the mountain in the Himalayas. And our listener writes in and says, He is our beautiful mackerel tabby overlord. Now, for some reason, Meru's favorite food in the whole world is apples. Huh. I don't get it, but you know, cats are. There was a vet in our life at one time who said, "Yeah, cats are weird." Cats are weird. <laughs> it was his, that was his answer to everything. I had you a know? question about a thing, you know. and I didn't know cats are weird. Cats are weird. weird. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Meru demands that we hold an apple in place for him so he can more easily lick it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> this this Meru knows who's in charge, right? Mm-hmm. He certainly likes freshly poured cat food, but he'll honestly try to eat anything that enters his realm, especially if it is junk on the ground. So perhaps his favorite cat quote unquote food is actually whatever is freshly floored. <laughs> ah. Ah. Yeah. Our listener writes, thank you. Blue Gal and Drift Glass, for all that you do, we cannot express how meaningful it is to have clear-eyed and passionate people like you to listen to. Thank you. That's sweet of you. And yes, Meru will, you know, condescend to eating 
freshly poured cat food, our fake sponsor. Mm -hmm. Whether you serve pet store perfection or dollar store direct, your cat will sit on the kitchen floor and demand that the food they eat is only freshly poured. Freshly poured, freshly poured. Oh, my Lord, it's freshly poured. And you can visit Meru at our Facebook page or website. And you can send your internet kitty or other pet to us at our email address, proleftpodcast at gmail.com. Be aware, this is not a sweepstakes. Everyone's a winner. <laughs> if you send in a pet, eventually they will be internet pet of the week. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we do not discriminate. We're glad to have all of your pictures. Just send us a picture of your pet and eventually it will be selected. You can also write to both of us at proleftpodcast at gmail.com. Feel free to write us. We love hearing from you. Be aware that if you write us at any of our addresses, we reserve the right to read your email or U.S. Postal Service, go Postal Unions. Letter on the air unless you say otherwise. Hashtag save the post office. Mm -hmm. Don't forget our gourmet coffee guideline. If you can afford to buy an espresso-based beverage for yourself, buy one for us. This is not charity. This is our job. Approximately 1% of our listeners support this podcast with a contribution, and you can too. See our website, proleftpod.com, for details. Our PayPal postal address information, it's not too late to get merch. It's a perfect time to get merch in time for the election. We have Both Sides Don't t-shirts, uh, all kinds of stuff. It's all there at proleftpod.com. Please share our show on social media. And there were a lot of people doing that this week. We yeah. certainly do appreciate it. Thank you. Suddenly thank this uptick. You. I really thank appreciate you. A little that. bit yeah. of an uptick. Yeah. Thank you very much for recommending uh, during the stay-at-home time that people listen to our podcast. That's very sweet, and we really appreciate it. Hey, Drift Glass, how are the Internet Kitties doing this week? Well, Blue Gal, the Internet Kitties remind everyone to chop wood, carry water, and get the good catnip, even if it costs a little more. Let's think about living. Let's think about loving. Let's think about the hooping and the hopping and the bopping and the loving, loving, dubbing. Let's forget about the whining and the crying, the shooting and the dying, and the fellow with a switchblade knife. Let's think about living. Let's think about life. Professional Left Podcast is recorded under a Creative Commons license, copyright 2019-2020, DGBG Productions.